Hi everyone, how are you doing? My name is Philip and welcome to another video. Now, have you ever sent out a CV to a company that you wanted to go to and they just didn't reply? Well, that's something that happens to all of us. Usually the reason why those companies don't reply to you is because of that first stage where you sent them your CV and unfortunately it didn't stand out from the crowd. Now in today's video I'm going to show you exactly how I wrote my CV and how I structured it and what I included in it to guarantee that it will always stand out from the crowd and also I used to interview people for top paying jobs and I was the interviewer and I knew exactly what I was looking for. So I have two sides of experience here that I'm going to compose into this video to make sure that you will end up with the perfect resume when you are applying for a software engineering job. Now, first of all, I wanted to talk about some of the things you should never ever do on a CV and that should be like concrete things that you avoid at every cost. And there is a few of them that I have noticed throughout the years of writing my own CVs and I saw what works and what doesn't. And also from the CVs I got with other people or some things that I noticed personally that I don't like. Now, the first thing you should not do is write a whole monologue about yourself. I don't want your CV to be five, 10, 15, 20 pages long telling me your whole life story. I am not interested and I don't have time for that. And the interviewers will also not have time for that. You wanna keep it concise, to the point, and very relevant in showing the skills that you have to offer. So as a rule of thumb, you should just keep your CV one page long. You should be able to get everything into one page. If you really cannot and you have really relevant information to tell, make it two. But my CV is only one page long and that's all I keep it at. Now the second thing you should definitely not do is make spelling mistakes. Oh my goodness, the amount of CVs I have gotten from people where they misspell things. And this was specifically a role that was applying for front-end UI. Now, if I see spelling mistakes on a CV, that's an instant no for me. And why am I paying so much attention to that? Well, I'm paying so much attention to spelling mistakes because a CV is supposedly something that's important for you in getting that job that you really want. If you're not putting effort into your own CV, how much effort will you put into the work of the company? Well, those things to relate and I don't wanna hire someone who doesn't really care about the company or care about the work that they're doing. Check your CV once, twice, three times, 10 times, 100 times, get someone else to read it, then get another different person to read it again to make sure that you don't make that mistake. Number three, don't make yourself sound intelligent in a field that you're applying for when you don't know anything or you don't know much about it unless you are actually really good at that field and you know exactly what you're talking about. When I was interviewing people and I got their CVs, I had some people say, oh, I'm an expert at this and this and that and I know how to do this. The time came to the interview, I sit the person down, I ask the question, they don't really know how to answer that question. Telling lies, writing false information is extremely bad and the interviewer will know. They have experience, and especially if you're being interviewed by a person who knows that technology really well, if you don't know something, they're going to know straight away. So it's better to be honest and put what you actually know than the opposite. Number four on the list is don't add a picture of yourself. You're applying for a software engineering job. I don't need to see what you look like. That's a waste of space in my opinion that you can use to put other relevant information that will actually interest the person that's hiring you uh, rather than seeing your face no matter how beautiful you are. <laughs> and finally, I see this often on CVs and on CV templates and other things where people mention all the skills that they have, which I think is a great thing to put on a CV. But here is the thing, let me give you an example. Someone will say, hey, I know JavaScript, but I don't just know JavaScript. I'm 93.6785829% proficient in JavaScript. What is that supposed to mean? You can't put your skills on a scale. Doing those kind of scaled measures on a CV of how well you know something, I think are just very inaccurate. And the best way to show someone that's interviewing you or to show a person at the job that wants to hire you how good you are at something is by showcasing your projects in that particular skill on GitHub or wherever else you want to show your code. So make sure you keep a note of all those things that you really don't want to do because they will just make the person look at your CV and just instantly put it to the side. But now 
let's look at my CV and I'll explain why I have included every single one of those sections and why you should do that too and why it's important. Okay, so here we have my CV. Now, I always think it's great to have your name as the title because you know who the resume belongs to and who the whole page is about. Now, the first section I always have is my personal details. Include your address, your contact number and your email. I think those are the most important things to be able to get in touch with you when they want to proceed further. The next thing I always have on my CV is my education. Now, you don't want to go back to primary school and tell them all the little drawings that you did when you were six, that is really not relevant at all. The most you want to go back to is your high school perhaps, or just even leave it at university. I included my high school because I wanted to show that I did courses that are related to computer science. So here I specified from, you know, the latest to uh, the second latest, you know, what my university was, what kind of course at university I took, uh, what kind of degree I got, and then I specified obviously my high school details and also my grades that I got there. Now the next part is the work experience and I think that's one of the main and most important sections on the CV. Here you are kind of showcasing what kind of experience you had before you're applying for the current job. Experience is really important. You gain most of your skills when you're in a certain company or working for someone and you're exposed to those kind of real life problems that you have to deal with. Now here obviously I've worked at Cisco for two years now and I'm going to be starting my full time so that's something I'm going to add and maybe remove some of the other things that I'm not as relevant but on here I just thought I'm going to show some of my work experience, three of them kind of which are really strictly related to computer science and software development. One of them I was an ambassador at the School of Computing and I was you know I was running homework club which means I was helping all the other students with some computer science concepts which just shows that initiative that you wanted to help and that you had an understanding. And then finally I, I put something you know that is completely different which I started at a very young age and I was selling images which just kind of shows that you had some other interests apart from that which were also you know quite interesting. Now if you go further down in my CV, there is another really important section, and that's your computing skills. Here you just want to briefly mention what you know and what you can work with. Now don't say you know everything, don't list every single programming language there, that is not what you want to do, just list the things that you're actually comfortable working with and things that they can possibly ask you questions on. Because if I was the person that was looking at the CV, I would be picking questions from those languages that I could ask you on to see if you actually have an understanding to test whatever you wrote on the CV is actually true. So make sure to include like a relevant list. If you only know like two or three technologies, just put two or three, don't make bullshit up. It won't help you in any way. It'll just make things even more difficult and stressful when you go to that second stage interview when they'll start asking you questions. Uh, so just make sure it's very relevant and make sure it's always up to date when you're sending stuff uh, to other companies. Now, I have an awards and other achievements section. Now, I was lucky enough to participate in many hackathons and to mention some things that, you know, could set me apart from other people. Those are things that people, when they look at UCV, will take into account. Bear this in mind, the people that are hiring you, they want successful people. So tell them about the successful things that you have done. They don't always have to be related to computer science. It's also more of like an outside interest. What have you done that sets you apart from the crowd? What is it about you that's different? And what is it about you that will want me to hire you? Now, for example, you know, I've mentioned things like, you know, I'm the creator of music. I was named 100 top most influential people shaping British technology. I went to this and this and this and this hackathon. And then at the bottom I said, well, you know, I've participated in this mathematics challenge and I won some prizes in that. And I put that down because that's something that, you know, I was proud of and showcases that I wanted to be good at doing something. The next section that I have is the interests and activities. An employee wants you to have interest because they want a person that's more broad in what they do. They also want to be able to have a normal conversation with you that's not code. They want to know if you have any hobbies, you know, what you like doing after work, uh, what you're interested in, do you have any passions, are you working on anything cool? Now here I mentioned, you know, some of the things I like doing, uh, certain things that are maybe technically more related to technology than others. 
And I also said that I have a YouTube channel. Obviously, I uh, sell educational knowledge on YouTube, so that's something that would benefit me if my interviewer was to read this. But then there is other things that people could do that are also very interesting, so don't get me wrong, this is just something that's personal to me that makes me stand out from the crowd. Now the other section I like to mention is my projects. Projects that I am proud of or projects that I'm currently working on to showcase that you're always interested and your interest goes away from just work stuff to you doing some personal projects in the field. Now obviously if you guys don't know I've made music which was like an Apple web music player that went viral all over the world and we got like 250,000 users on it. So that's one of the things I was proud of. And the other thing that I put as an example here that I did previously uh, is work on some e-commerce portal that I wanted to develop into like, you know, uh, stock photography. It's something that I wanted to do beforehand. So as an example, you could put the current projects that you're working on. Now, the other section that I have is foreign languages. Now, I'm not a British citizen. I wasn't born in the UK, I was born back in Poland. So I'm bilingual, I can speak two languages. It's always good to mention if you can speak any other languages, it kind of gives you a broader area that you can talk about however many languages you might know. It's always a nice thing to mention on a CD. If not, then just you don't need to include that section. Now there is one thing I want to mention that I didn't say previously is if you see all my projects or if you see all my work experience, everywhere below it, I mentioned the kind of technologies that I've worked with. Hey, I worked at this company and I worked with this technology. But on the other hand, two years later, I moved to this company and I worked with those skills and those skills are under my belt and I know how to work with them. So it kind of showcases even more than what you've put under the computing skills. It kind of differentiates all the different jobs and work experience that you have. Even if they were at the same company, you might have been working with different things and it's very relevant to mention that. And that's where I'm gonna wrap up the video. I think if you follow all these things and if you make sure you don't make any of the mistakes and you don't include the things that I mentioned at the beginning, you will have an awesome CV. Now feel free to use the way I used mine. I think one thing I didn't mention is that I added a little bit of color to it and I kept it very simple. It is okay to add color to a CV, just don't make it too bright and make sure it looks good on a white page. Other than that, I think you are in a great position to make that perfect CV that will get you, you know, recognized every time you send that CV over and, and make sure that you get transferred to the next stage. Now, if you want to find out more about what it's like being interviewed and the interview skills that you should have, I made a whole video on how to bang that six digit salary job, which will be here. <laughs> so make sure you go check that out. Now, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had so much fun making it. I know you guys were looking forward to seeing this resume video and I hope it gives you some really valuable information. But for now, guys, as always, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Sunlight that always stays Dinner by the waterway It's that sweet light